Understanding how to manage certificates can help you with applying certificates to applications. I'm on a Windows server and I'm going to right click on the start button and choose run and we're going to type in MMC for Microsoft Management Console. Now you can't get there by doing the search because it says it won't find it. So you have to type in MMC. Now once we're in here, we're allowed to add in all different types of snap-ins. A snap-in is a type of application or utility that you can get to most of the time through other means, such as Active Directory users and computers. You could find that in Server Manager under the Tools menu, but you can also add it here as well. And one of the nice things about this is, is you can create a custom MMC. That way you can use the tools that you use on a regular basis in your custom MMC, and you won't have to open them all up individually using Server Manager or from Command Line. We're talking about certificates, so I'm going to click on Certificate. And I'm going to choose the computer account because that's the one that's going to affect applications. So I'll click Next. I want to choose the local computer, although it is possible for me to open up this very same thing from another computer that I can see here. Another advantage to using MMC. I can choose to open up many different computers, many different services, all right in one location. Now I'm going to click OK. And I see certificates, and I see we're using this on the local computer. Now what I want to do is take a look at some of these. Not all of them mean anything. So for instance, if I'm not using Windows Server Update services, then I may not see a certificate there. So there's a lot of different things here that don't have anything assigned with it. However, there are a few things that are really important to know. One of those would be the third-party root certification authorities, and then click on certificates. These are certificates that are added in by Microsoft by default when you install the server. And what they do is they allow you to go and purchase a public certificate and have it automatically trusted by the server. And if you buy from a company that doesn't have their certificate in here by default, you can also download their root certificate and then install it here just by right clicking, choosing all tasks and choose import. Locate their certificate and then it'll show up here and then you'll be able to start using the certificate that you'll be installing up in the personal section. I'm going to take a look at the untrusted certificates. This is used by the certificate revocation list. And what you can see is that if you have any certificates that are not allowed, they'll be on what's called the disallowed list. So that way, if you have a certificate that you no longer trust, you can add it in here, and then no one will be able to use it. You also have trusted publishers, but this is not populated by default and is rarely used. However, sometimes it does go hand in hand with the third party root certification authorities. Then you have intermediate certification authorities. This is going to be part of your certificates that you download from a public location. So if you download the root, you'll also download the intermediate as well. And then you can use the personal certificate, which is the one that we mainly use as sysadmin. You won't always use an intermediate certification authority certificate, but when you need it, you will absolutely be able to install it here. How do you know you need it? Well, if your third-party root certification authority certificate has been added, and your public certificate has been added under the personal section and things still don't work, then your vendor will also give you this intermediate certification that you can once again import using the all tasks import option. Then you want to go to where it says personal. This is the most important part in your MMC console. Now, by default, you're going to see the name of the server that you see here. And you're going to see both a server certificate and a client certificate. And you might see a lot more certificates than that. You don't need to make any changes to any certificates that have the name of the server in it. Now, this test certificate is one I created using PowerShell. So I've imported it after I installed it, and that's why it's here. And you can import it the same way that I've installed the other ones with the All Tasks Import option. You can also request a new certificate. Now, what this does is it creates a template to request a certificate. I'm going to go and click Next. Now it's going to ask me, what type of certificate do I want? Do I want an Active Directory Enrollment Policy certificate? Or do I want to add a new one configured by myself? 
and you can go through this wizard and set up the type of certificate that you want to get. Now, a lot of these have to do with certificates that are templates already installed on the server, such as for an encryption template or a website template that are already predetermined and pre-set up. All you have to do is plug in your information to make it work. But it will definitely create this certificate request that is going to be fulfilled by your root authority server, which is going to be done in Active Directory. So this does not create a public certificate that's trusted by everyone by default. This is going to create an Active Directory certificate that you need to trust through group policy. So it's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're talking about here, but I do want to show you this certificate that's already here. Right click on it, and I want to choose to export it. Exporting certificates is a great feature because it allows us to send a certificate to another server or to another server's application. So I'll click on export and we get this export wizard that comes up. We click next. Now, if the certificate has a password attached to it, and you'll have to do that during the creation of the certificate, then you can export the private key because it's linked to that password. If you don't have one, you can choose no. And there's a difference when you export the certificate, because if you do it without the private key, then it's going to have a different extension. It's going to be .cer. If you do it with the private key, it's going to be a .pfx. So sometimes you see different certificate extensions, and that's just a couple of them, and that is what they mean. So now we can see I've chosen the one with the private key. So it's going to be a .pfx file. If I chose to not do that, I could do the .cer or I could do some of these other ones as well. I'm going to click Next. Now I can type in the password. This is the password that has to match the password that was created during the creation of the certificate. Or I could choose specific groups or usernames that I would like to allow to be able to use the certificate through Active Directory. So either way, I can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna type in the password that was used during creation. And that way I can use it outside of Active Directory as well. Now I can browse to save that file and I'll just call it test cert one and I'll save it onto the desktop. And I'll click finish. Now I'm going to minimize my MMC and there's my test certificate. Now I can copy it and paste it and use it in other applications on other servers as well. Learning to manage certificates in a Windows server is a useful and employable skill. I strongly suggest you learn more about managing certificates for servers and applications.